The views expressed on the following broadcast do not necessarily reflect those of KHLT, Take 12 Radio, or our affiliates. The opinions on this show should not be considered as medical, psychological, or professional advice and are those of the host, co-host, and guest. Take 12 Radio and KHLT Recovery Broadcasting are not affiliated with any particular 12-step fellowship. Welcome to Entitled to Overcome, Exploring Solutions for Life Today, a presentation of Take 12 Recovery Radio. And now, here are your co-hosts, Dave Fleming and the Monty Man. And Dave is going to sing it. Overcome. Don't cry victim to me. Well, welcome one and all to another episode of Entitled to Overcome Solutions for Life Today. Not tomorrow, not yesterday, but today. today. Amen to that. All right. And we definitely need some solutions. Uh, that's for sure. Um, hey, listen. Yes, hey, are I'm they, listening. Are, are they listening? <laughs> Hello. Um, Just shout out to uh, Ezekiel. I know I, he's you listening. You know, that's funny. You say that because I was going to say, hey there, summertime Santa. What's going down? You got to say it right. Okay, say summertime it. Santa. Summertime Santa. Summertime Santa. Yeah, I saw, saw, him, uh, I saw him the other night at the uh, completion ceremony for David Johnny and Rick Armour. Both completed. Uh, congratulations to them both for completing their 12 months residential recovery program out at the Adult and Teen Challenge Center That's in awesome. Shed, Oregon. Yeah. David Johnny is up, uh, going up to Absolute, and Rick Armour's doing an internship. And uh, yeah, kudos to them. Lots of phase ups. And, and old summertime Santa was there. Summertime Santa. He is so supportive, man. He just he comes and supports the guys and does, he does the deal. Yes, he does. If you want to hear. Well, that's what it's all about. If you want to hear uh, Ezekiel's story of experience, strength, and hope, uh, simply go to Take 12 Recovery Radio and click on the Podomatic link or the Spotify link or the iHeart link or the YouTube link <laughs> and look up Easy Does It, and you'll hear his story uh, of experience, strength, so, and hope. Kind of appropriate. And uh, I just want to sh give a shout out to my buddy Dean out in uh, Minnesota. Hi, uh, Dean. Prayers are with you, buddy. Wave at him there. What's yeah. up, brother? There he is. <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, I just prayers go out to you that uh, things uh, continue to go well for you. Yeah, neat. And uh, so the topic uh, the topic here on uh, on this show, this show is brought to you by Take 12 Recovery Radio. And uh, this is really Dave's, Dave's show uh, entitled to overcome solutions for life today with Dave the vid. Uh, listen, it's it's all about mentorship today, the importance of a good mentor. Listen, a good mentor has the ability to communicate what they have learned in life, right? And they are prepared, approachable, available, and have good listening skills. A good mentor practices honesty and diplomacy. They're objective and fair, and they show compassion. But is there more to that? And what really is a mentor? What is, why is it so important to have a mentor, uh, semantics aren't nearly as important. Sponsor, mentor, spiritual advisor, whatever you want to call them. But uh, Dave brought this topic up. He's going to be sharing that with us. But before we get into that, Dave, you know it's it's getting about time, right? Time for that ticking clock. Where's the ticking clock? There it is. <laughs> Little delay there. Oh. It's time for Dave and Monty's that's right. We like to take our aggressions out and break things. It's fun to break things. Especially ice. And then you can like put it in your drink and chill yeah. it and put it in your coffee if you so are inclined. Get that bag of ice from your local convenience store and smash it on the ground. Isn't it? You know, <laughs> it, you, what is the deal? So you you break the ice, right? Right, right. In the bag, so it's nice and loose. Right. And it's, you know, and every time you take it out of the freezer, you got to break it up and loosen it up. What's yeah, what the deal? What is that? How does it melt in the freezer? That's what I want to, because I dump it in the uh, in the little oblong box, yeah. you know, because I, I don't have an ice maker. So the I ice tray or I stick ice it in box? the box. Yeah, the ice tray, and then I crack it open, put it in the box. Sure. 
And then at the end of the day, you pull it out. It's all one big lump. Right. What's up with that? How does that happen? I don't know. That makes no sense. Is your what, what temperature <laughs> is your freezer? <laughs> um, all right. So uh, a listener writes. Now I'm not sure if I can take this seriously or not. Um, so assuming it's true, never assume. Uh, Jason writes, and I'm assuming he's from Boston. Uh, he says, as my roommate was preparing his costume for this Halloween, he starts early. He says, I guess so. He came up with the great idea to, to design for this costume a meth monster. The costume was to have two heads, six arms, and look like a giant cockroach. Though this was a good idea and going to be a, a pretty elaborate, the method to my roommate's madness was to actually sell meth on the streets of Boston, more specifically on Methadone Mile, which I'd never heard of, but I guess there is one, a stretch of Massachusetts Avenue south of downtown where methadone clinics, sober homes, and other drug treatment services have grown in the shadow of the Boston Medical Center. When I share with my roommate that this was beyond a crazy idea and he should stick to being the great pizza delivery boy that he was, he balked at my suggestion. What, if, <laughs> what advice can you give me to help my roommate understand this is not a good idea. He's determined to make a go of it regardless of my ranting. Thank you for your help, Jason. <laughs> now, if this is true, <laughs> Dave, tell Jason, help this guy. <laughs> you can't fix stupid. Oh, my gosh. Really, Jason? First Sometimes of all you just got to let people make mistakes. I guess. Right? It's the only way they're going to learn. I'd be getting a different roommate. I, you right. Get, you're going to design a meth, co a meth monster and then sell dope out of the costume? Well, and, I can imagine that this probably isn't the first time, first time. that this person has come up with some <laughs> goofy ideas. I uh, you probably should have thought ahead when you <laughs> chose this person to be your roommate. <laughs> I can just see it. Hey, Jason. Hey, buddy. Hey, wake up. I got a great idea. I'm going to make a costume of a meth monster, and I'm going to make us a ton of money, and we're never going to have to pay rent again, man. What does a meth monster look like? I, don't know, I guess it depends on everybody's personal experience. Mine just look like shadow people. You know. The people in the trees or whatever. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> All right. It must be a Petaluma thing. Uh, it could be. <laughs> it, it could be a Petaluma thing. Uh, shout out to my friend Greg F. From Petaluma. Doing the recovery deal. All right. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. Hey, check it out. The best in recovery talk and positive music radio is now available on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, YouTube, and Podomatic. Simply visit any of these platforms and search for Take 12 Recovery Radio. Listen and download hundreds of our shows for fun and for free. Also available at Take12Radio.com. You and I know all too well how talented folks in recovery are. KHLT Broadcasting, the Take 12 Recovery Radio Show, and the Recovery Broadcasting Network are handing you the opportunity to share some of that talent. If you've ever written your own songs and have always wanted to share them publicly, here's the chance to share your talent with thousands of people all over the world through Internet Radio. For the next several months, the Monty Man will be reviewing songs written and performed by people in recovery. Whether you're an accomplished musician or a novice, he wants to hear from you. All forms of music will be considered. Adhering to federal copyright laws and possible contractual agreements, some restrictions may apply. To submit your original music by email, send mp3s to take12radio at comcast.net. That's T-A-K-E, the number 12, radio at comcast.net. Or drop your CD in the mail addressed to KHLT PO Box 93 Albany, Oregon, 97321. And Monty Man, Monty Man, don't forget that really important thing. Uh, what's that, Cecil? No inappropriate language. This is a G-rated radio station. So please, 
Keep it family friendly. Hey, Cecil, you remembered. All righty. Well, Denver Bell there. Welcome back to the show titled Overcome Solutions for Life Today with CAD. Certified. Certifiable. Certifiable certified alcohol and drink counsel level two, two level. Now I can't even talk. Level two. It must be my dentures are. Are, are, you, are the, you using that polydin or whatever? No, I don't what use that. that? They, they, the suction keeps in, but I think the soft lining needs to be redone because the other day I sneezed and they almost went flying across the room. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> anyway, Dave Fleming, there he is. If you're watching on YouTube, yeah, giving you a high five there. Oh, that's a, 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 a sign. That's a V for vid. For vid. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Come so, on now. So the topic is um, the importance of a mentor, um, i.e. in our recovery, in life in general, though, right, Dave? Yeah. Yeah. So we're, what's going on? Well, we're all, you know, we're social creatures you know we're yeah. social beings and so we can't do we can't do anything by ourselves we can try i know i right. tried for a number of years trying to do it on my own and isolate and i don't need any help from anybody i got this because you know yeah. that way you don't have to worry about trusting anybody or you know letting anybody in to know who what's really going on you know you got to keep those walls up you know how that goes sure and there's even there's even a, a there oh, see, probably a little over a year ago um there was a whole thread on on um i think it was friends of bill and bob or something that facebook page why why in the blankety blank do i need a sponsor anyway you know being being specific about sponsorship which is a form of mentorship. Right. Um, and people were arguing back and forth. Well, you know, you, you don't know how to fly a plane. You need somebody to teach you how to fly the plane, right? And it's like, I don't need anybody, just like we were saying. I don't need anybody. I don't need nobody. I can just right. sit in these meetings and listen to people talk. And I know how to apply and implement this stuff myself. I don't need you. I don't need anybody. Well, there, there are some people that have been able to – get sober and stay sober and not go to meetings or have a sponsor. But I would venture to guess that they have somebody or something in their lives that they're, that is their support system you know? I, I, or they're yeah. doing stuff in the community. Uh, they're probably not part the Lone Ranger completely. Helping right? somebody else out, yeah. you know, and you know, maybe not, but I also got to think about like, what is your quality of life? <laughs> Um, there's lots of other things that, that come into play. I mean, yeah, abstinence is fine as far as it goes, but if that's all you're experiencing in life, that's kind of sad. Well, maybe that's all you need, right? Everything else is good. Well, that's fine, but I'm just saying if everything else, is, if everything else isn't good, <laughs> maybe it's not, it maybe everything is good and you don't want to improve anything, right? Mm, interesting. So this isn't the show for you. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. But if you, you know, if you're, you know, you're struggling or maybe you're thinking about doing something different, you know, mentoring is, is probably the best way or sponsorship, whatever your whatever you want to terminology you want to use. Yeah. It's basically uh, another, another person, hopefully, that has been through same or similar, uh, life situation and has come through on the other side and mm -hmm. changed their life. You know, it's kind of like with sponsorship. We always want to pick a sponsor that has something that we want. Right. So if they've, you know, got their life put together, maybe they have, you know, they're married, they have a house. Well, you, you know, uh, you want to find out, you know, what, how did they do it? It's like anything else, right? Any, if you want to be good at business, you go hang out with people that are good at business. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's the only way you, if you want to get better at playing sports, you go practice and you go hang out with people that can help you improve. You know, it's funny because uh, not too many weeks ago, I was in a 12 step support meeting and this guy who is an old, would be considered an old timer said, well, you know what, kid, you probably, <laughs> you probably don't want to do what I did. You know, you probably don't want to work the program I worked. You know, I might get you drunk, you know. And, I'm, and this guy's been sober for years. And I thought to myself, look, at, 
I probably don't want to work the program. Well, is he <laughs> being know. sarcastic? Or? Uh, no, he's serious. I've heard him say it before. And it's kind of like, I look at it like this. If I, if I see some qualities of life in you and I want what you have, I want to do what you did. Right. I want to do that. Tell, show me what you did. Show me how you did it. Just don't tell me, well, I did it one day at a time. Right. Be more specific, <laughs> especially if you're going to be my sponsor or my mentor that I'm going to meet with you on some kind of regular basis. Right. right. Or what's the other one? Take the cotton out of your ears and stick it in your mouth. Yeah. T- hey, kid. That's not a. Take the cotton out of your ears. Stick your- you have nothing to say. That's Shut not, up. Not a good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, yeah. It's like anything else in life. If you want to improve, right, you go hang out with people that are going to help you improve. That have improved because if you, yeah. you I mean, and I believe me, I've tried every way under the sun mm-hmm. to do things. You know, all the self help books. You know, and right. You know, I don't need someone. I can just read a book, and it's like no, it you, that'll get you some information, but it's. There's more to it yet to be able to implement it and work through the day to day issues and everybody's different. Every situation is different. And just because someone writes something in a book doesn't mean that's the way your situation is going to go. So it's good to have somebody that you can bounce stuff off of. Uh, my, 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 when my, um, uh, my two boys were growing up, they, they went to, um, karate for kids, ATA martial arts thing, right? right? Just to learn some disciplines and things like that. And it was yeah. really good for them. Uh, but the instructor told him, look at, you know, I'm going to show you how to approach somebody that may come at you inappropriately, and I'm going to show you some different techniques. But that isn't going to ensure that in real life, the guy, the perpetrator is going to approach you in the way that I'm showing you. He may approach you in a totally different manner right. that you're not prepared for. So no matter how much head knowledge you get, Right, it's only going to go so far. Right, so you got to have practical application. You need somebody in your life that's going. Uh, I'm I'm a hands-on person. You know, show me how to do this, then let me do this and and practice it. Right, but just don't give me a form like here's a four-step form with columns in it. Tell me to read it, therefore I've done it. That doesn't work. I right. need you to walk me through. Right, because you have questions, right? Or you right. you do it and it's like your understanding is totally off. And so how are you going to know that unless you have somebody like a mentor or sponsor to help you yeah. um, go help you work through it? Do you have that thing that you that you brought up on the internet? The uh the reading? The reading? Yeah. That, I, I I do. You want me to hand it to you? I got it. You got it? I thought it was really excellent. So, you mean to read it? Yeah. If I can. If I can. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, it doesn't want to... Walking with the wise man? Walking, or with, with, wise the, man? walking with wise men. Wise right? men, yeah. Uh, he who walks with wise men will be wise, right? That's what we were talking about. Mm-hmm. But the companion of fools will be destroyed. You know, so in other words... Make sure that you you're you're uh, getting help from somebody that is has your best interest at heart mm-hmm. and is going to give you good information, not you know bad information. Yeah. Uh, I would never I would never have made it through my own recovery without my mentor. My mentor or role model encouraged and guided me throughout <clears throat> my early recovery. My mentor was bigger than life. He was a bedrock of stability. He reflected for me what normal was and he gleamed with inner strength and integrity. He gave me a reason to hope and a goal uh, to work towards. Uh, integrity is, is is a big word and it's it's mm-hmm. just, it's probably the, one of the most important words that mm. we uh, we need in our recovery, right? Got to yeah. have integrity. Yeah. Mentor is valuable when a man is seriously man or woman seriously undertaking his recovery. Uh, no one has ever recovered totally on his own from an addiction. In recovery, it is important to be aligned one's, to align oneself with, with a healthy role model, a model to look up to. Mentor is usually older and wiser, someone who has faced his problems head on and come out as a stronger man on the other side. He is someone you deeply trust. A mentor is one who is willing to take you 
on a, on as an apprentice working with you until you have learned to trade the trade of life. Most importantly, a mentor walks closely with God. Right? Yeah. Lord, I pray that you will bring me a mentor who walks after you. Um, you know, <laughs> that's one of those things where I, even in my recovery, uh, I tended to early, especially early on, I would go to meetings every day for almost two years. Mm-hmm. Partly because I don't know how to, I didn't know how to live life on life's terms. Sure. And, um, always leaned on myself, and so I don't think I was really ready to entirely to lean on someone else. Mm. But at least I was willing to look at that. Right, go to meetings. I got a sponsor. Um, I had a sponsor before I even got out of treatment. Yeah, uh, that's because good. I wanted I wanted to hit the ground running, and I wanted to make sure that I was doing everything uh, that I could do to ensure my uh, not only sobriety, um, which wasn't the main thing at the time, because that was kind of a given for me. Mm-hmm. But it was just living life uh, on life's terms without some kind of chemicals or behaviors or whatever, and. You know, I've had some excellent uh, sponsors slash mentors along the way that uh, uh, I've kept in my life still to this day. And they've, you know, guided me and supported me and, and were there when no one else was. Mm-hmm. Um, just, you know, through the little, the little mini stuff, you know, like right. I'm having a bad day, you know. Which yeah. I yeah. just want to like. Tear something, tear something totally up, apart, right? right, right. <laughs> Throw somebody out the front window, you know. And then, I, then I, you know, no, that's not obviously not what to do. So, you know, you got to. I remember several times calling my sponsor, and uh, there's a there's a little path next to our house, a little bike path, and mm-hmm. p- pacing up back and forth on this on this trail, calling my sponsor, saying, hey. you know, hey, what's you know, and as I'm talking, I remember. You know, one time when I died, I was like, oh, what time is it? No, oh, there's a meeting here. So, you know, I yeah. went to a meeting and I got to not only see some people I hadn't seen in a while, but I got to share, you know, uh, how my day, day was. And as I'm talking, I'm listening to myself how ridiculous that I'm being. And so it's like, <laughs> you know, some of this we, we kind of process out ourselves, but it's through talking with others that we get, we process this. And then we yeah. hear other people's stories about how they've dealt with same or similar situation. Um, that's only way that I think I've gotten to this point today, you know, mm-hmm. 15 plus years mm-hmm. is not only, you know, doing the next right thing, but also having people in my life that I can, that I can lean on, I can depend on. And I, and I model that behavior. Right. You know, in fact, I was just, you know, telling you uh, earlier that I uh, talked to uh, an old client of mine uh, from Minnesota, uh, probably for about an hour yesterday. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and this is kind of what mentoring is all about, right? It's like we, you know, pass messages through messenger back and forth, you know, here mm-hmm. and there over mm-hmm. the years. And I helped him, you know, uh, when he was homeless, I helped him get into uh, a place out there. Um, so a friend of mine runs some, some sober houses out there. And, um, but he called me and was telling me what was going on and he was struggling and everything. And so we got to, we got to talking about the situation and, um, you know, he said that, uh, it helped a lot just having that conversation. And I told him, I said, this is what it's about. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, how far away you are, how much time has gone by or whether or not we're, we're meeting each week as a, you know, as a client and mm-hmm. counselor, you know, um, I'm here for you. Mm-hmm. Like if you need some help, you reach out and I'll do what I can to help you, uh, best I can. Yeah. Or at least be there to be a, a sounding board, uh, whatever need to be done. Um, and that's the least I could do. Sure. I mean, that doesn't take sure. any, take any effort. You know, he was yeah. telling me that he reached out to some people that are there, in the same city that he's living in and they just didn't have time for him. 
And wow. I told him, I says, you know what? You can, you know, you can call me anytime. I'm, yeah. not, I'm always going to be there for you, man. Yeah. Because that's what it's, what it's about is if someone reaches out, you know, we got to be, you know, the hand of, or the voice of uh, recovery or, you know, integrity. And we got to be there for whoever reaches out. And, uh, you know, for me anyway, it doesn't matter how much time has gone by, or even if I'm not working in the field, mm -hmm. I'm still going to be the same person. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know? Sure. Yeah. Because I'd want that uh, for myself. You want it for you. Yeah. And, you know, when I, when I hear, hear about people saying that, you know, they don't have time or give some other excuse. I, 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 I it, uh, it upsets me because I, how long does it take to talk to somebody? Yeah. And we're not necessarily talking about, I, I mean, for it, for instance, the sponsor that I worked with, with my first formal working of the 12 steps, right. He, he made absolutely sure that he had the time to invest in me. Uh, um, because it was very, it was very regimented. It was, we met at the same time. We did. I mean, he made sure that he, they could commit that time to me. Um, and to not be able to do that, to say that he was going to show up and then constantly have things, you know, get in the way and that kind of, that wouldn't have been good. So, right. so I needed that. Um, and so I think a, a mentor or a sponsor or an advisor, that is working with you, a, an actual, you know, let's say, for example, the 12 steps, steps one through 12, where you're meeting on a regular basis, they need to have the the time, uh, the energy and the ability to invest that time in you. If you don't have that, maybe you're not the right person to do that piece, but you always have time to listen to a guy on the phone for five minutes. You always have time um, to pick the guy up to go to the meeting or go to church or go to coffee. I don't, I'm sorry, but if I wrote down and kept, kept a record of five to 15 minute increments where I was doing nothing at the end of the day, I'd have a whole lot of time built up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, or watching some stupid, stupid movie on Netflix. Right. Right. For two so, hours. So I don't buy yeah. the, well, you know, I'm just a busy guy and you, you know, if you're that busy, maybe you need to be less busy. Right. If, if you can't find some time to help a fellow member of the human race who is hurting, or maybe they're not hurting, they just need a friend. And I've heard that too. I've it usually starts out the conversation. I know you're busy, or I know you're a busy guy, but right, right. And I'm right. like, no, I'm not. Yeah, if I'm uh, that if busy, I, I will make to, time. If I'm that busy, I need to get less busy. Right, and and being a mentor isn't necessarily. Like that working with somebody like uh, daily or weekly or whatever. It's not necessarily that that formal. Yeah. I yeah. have mentors that I've, you know, some of them I've worked with. Some of them I've been, I went to church with. Some of them I've watched, you know, from afar uh, in the in the field. And, uh, you know, I've connected with them. Uh, but they're being a mentor is just how you live your, you know, the integrity, how you live your day to day life. Yeah. You know, so a lot of that is, you know, uh, your, your, uh, your public presence out there too, you know, like Facebook, you yeah. know? Yeah. How are you presenting yourself? How are you presenting yourself? Yeah. Now that is, is a form of mentoring as well. Cause you're demonstrating, you know, what people are watching. You are. You. Oh, yeah, everybody's people watching. Are watching you, right? which, which brings me to, uh -oh. And I was going to I was going to bring this up next <laughs> month during the weekly wine, but what the heck? I'm going to bring it up now. Why put off till tomorrow, right? Yeah. Yeah, why put a, why do today when I can put off till tomorrow, right? <laughs> but why put it off? Yeah, and that's this. Um there's a lot of people that supposedly are spiritually healthy and they claim it and they they wave a banner of of sometimes religiosity and strong faith and boy, I'm a 12 stepper and I'm this and that. And yet then they post pictures of little children flipping you off or, um, or their, their language is just, and I'm not even talking about when they're angry. I'm just talking about general day-to-day -day stuff. Just women, pictures of women and uh, compromising positions on in, in their memes and things like that. Let me tell you something. I, I, I unfriend you. I just do. I don't. I don't block you, because I hope you listen to the show. You're gonna still see all my posts, 
But I unfriend you because I don't want to see that garbage. I just don't, yeah. I just don't want to. I get it once in a while. Somebody puts something weird up and they think it's ha ha fine. But this constant, you know, display of disrespect for the human race, it just gets old. And I'm like, I don't, I don't see it anymore. So, um, unbeknownst to them even, I just click on friends because I don't want to see the post. But right. I don't block them, you know, because I, I, I hope they get something out of the shows. But but we are if if you're if listen if you're in recovery one of the things that is, is absolutely essential is that you learn how to give away what's been given to you now you may not and some people have issue with this well you should always sponsor people well maybe you're not a person that can do that but you can mentor people you can be an example and one of the biggest ways to shine the experience that you've gotten and the positive influence that you've received from your recovery fellowship is on social media. What kind of stuff are you posting? Are you being encouraging? Or it's okay to be frustrated, but for the most part, it, is it, you know, palatable? Is it palatable? And if you're constantly bombarding people, if you're constantly ripping on people for their political views, I don't care what side of the fence you're on. That's not helpful. It just isn't. You know, a, a little jab here and there. I get it. That's what social media is about. That I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about this constant bombarding of just ripping people up. And then all of a sudden, maybe once in a while, you know, I'm so thankful for God that he's changed my life. Like, what are you doing? So so you're right, David. In mentorship, uh, you don't even have to be talking to somebody directly, just simply the fact that you're an example. What kind of example are you setting? What kind of integrity are you setting? Right. And I, I think that's important because it's not, it, it, there's not only are you, are you setting the example, but there's also, like you said, there's always people watching. And I know that that means a lot and it can change your life. I mean, uh, I'll give you an example. One of my mentors started out with uh, uh, when I was in treatment, you know, and it, I was in treatment and they have us watch these videos, these slick videos, right? Uh, and so the, uh, the guy that has this, does the create the created the slick character is a guy named Saul Selby. And he used to be, he was like the director at uh, Hazelden in center city, I think for a while, and then uh, it it turned out that uh, him and his wife went to the same church as I went to, and I got involved with their ministry mm -hmm. after I got sober. So this guy's been, kind of been in my life uh, all along, and at some point he actually called me up and he said, or sent me a message, and he said, he goes, hey, how would you like to come over to uh, – uh, Minnesota and Dalton Teen Challenge, and you know, once a week, and do a a, a twelve step group. Mm -hmm. So I, I said sure. So I went over there and did that, and then not not too long after that, he asked, you know, he offered me a full time job, right? Uh, to set, you know, start out setting up a, a community outpatient program, and kind of took off from there. But you know, that's purely based on. You know my character and my integrity. Yeah. You know, if I didn't have any of that, there's no way that that this person would have offered me this position. Or sure, know. sure. Um, yeah. You know, so I have um, give you a couple of my mentors, Doctor Allen Berger. Yep. Doctor Allen Berger, the author of Twelve Stupid Things of Mental Recovery, Twelve Smart Things to Do When the Booze and Drugs Are Gone. You know, this guy, and he he, he is a major player at Hazelton Betty Ford. Yep. Major, major player. Um, Dr. Berger and I have known each other for a very long time. And I've been, I've been very, in the past, we've been very active with him in um, some of the conventions and so forth. Um, and this guy continues to be my mentor, even though I I, I seldom speak with him on right. the phone. Right. Right. Um, but I watch his videos. I, wa I watch his webinars. I listen to him. I read his books, you know. And... When he posts things, he, he, he doesn't post inappropriate stuff. He, he, he's kind. He's considerate. He, now, he, that doesn't mean he doesn't have bad days, right? Yeah, everyone doesn't mean, does. Yeah. But, I mean, his integrity shines. I, I can send anybody to his Facebook page or his website, and you're not going to get 
You're not going to get politi- political. You're not going to get uh, different religious views. You're not. You're just going to get Dr. Berger. Yeah. Another one is Tony Messbarger. He is um, probably one of the nation's leading interventionists. Uh, I don't know if he's still working for Benchmark Recovery Centers um, um, or not out of out of Texas, but. He, we did a whole series with understanding intervention with him and I continue to read his stuff and look at his stuff, you know, and, and, and he displays a level of integrity on his social media and, and how he acts in public and, and that kind of thing. Right. And he's, he's one of my mentors and yet I don't talk to him. But if you have a yeah. question or oh, you man. wanted to some advice on some, you just you, I could pick up the phone, right? And talk to either one of those guys. Pick up the phone, shoot him an email, whatever. Now I I'm at the same one of my uh, sponsors, Will Hudson. He he also works for Hazel and Betty Ford yeah. out in Center City, and you know we can pick up right where we left off at any point. Um, but yeah, he's he's one of my. Uh, I used to. It was funny because he was like, for whatever reason, there was a time there where we. Our our schedules just could not sync up, mm-hmm. and he said, "You know, you're the you're an odd duck because you're like I don't have to do anything. Like you're already <laughs> doing everything that I would suggest that you do." Right. I said, "Yeah, but I you know it's still I still need your your guidance and advice and 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 friendship basically." Yeah. And you know, uh, we've watched each other go through things over the years, you know, good and bad. We've we've all stumbled along the way and. Mm-hmm. And but we're still friends, you know. We're still, you know, I I I love him and I appreciate any advice that he, you know, that he has for me. And so, um, those are those are the people that we want to have in our lives. And hopefully, yeah, you know, everyone out there has got at least one person uh, that they can be honest with. They can, and it doesn't have to be your sponsor, right? It can be it can be your sponsor, but it doesn't have to be, right? Um, so I got. And, and I thought maybe I'd read so and then you could comment on them. I, I got eight points uh, of a healthy mentor uh, here. Number one, uh, ability and willingness to communicate what they know. Uh, it goes without saying that a mentor, um, as a mentor, you're regarded as an, as an expert in your field or area of responsibility. So like Dr. Berger, if I want to know something about emotional sobriety, that's the guy I'm going to. Right. You know. Uh, but it's one thing to know what you're doing. It's entirely another to be able to clearly explain what you know and to be willing to take the time to do it. Forget the jargon, the acronyms, and the buzzwords. Just get real. Right. Just be real. It's like, how can I help you? Yeah. And sometimes not, you're not, not saying anything. You're just not listening. spew out like all the knowledge on the that I have, right? It's like, right. no, how can I help you? Yeah. Yeah. How can I help you? So there's, a, there's a video out there. Uh, have you seen the nail in the head video? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a picture. Uh, there's a picture of this poor woman, and she's in pain. And all it does is show like her eyes and her mouth and her nose, right? And and the husband's sitting there, and she's talking about all this pain she's in. And the look on his face is like just bewildered. And as the as and then he's giving her advice. He's just trying to, hey, hey, why don't you? And she stops him. No, and she keeps talking. Yeah, but why don't you? No, wait a minute. I'm, I'm still talking. Yeah, but honey, what? And then the camera pulls back. And there's a nail in her head. He yeah. says, just pull the nail out of your head. And she's like, it's like, it's not about the nail. You're not hearing me. You know, and I think we do that with people, especially guys, with with our, our women folk. We want to fix them. Uh. Sometimes... Sometimes we need a mentor just to listen to us. Yep, and that's that's a uh, that's one of those things that I had to learn too. And I know I've shared this before, but you know, uh, you're right. As as men are, we're we're wired to to fix things. Yeah. So you know, if we get a problem, no matter what it is, <laughs> we want to fix it, right? And so you you know, if you're in a relationship, you come home and oh, how was your day? And then you know, maybe there's a you know so and so at work. Blah 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 blah. blah. And, you know, uh, sometimes we interrupt and say, yeah, that, you know, you should do this or you should do that. You know, my wife told me one time, she says, you know, you don't always have to fix everything. Right. And I, 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 I had to stop for a second and go, okay. <laughs> but that's my job, honey. But, you know, she just goes, sometimes I just need you to listen, right? Yeah. And yeah. so from that point on, it's, it's like now, it's like, oh, okay. 
So what I need to do is I need to change what I the way that I approach this. Like mm-hmm. I can listen or I mm-hmm. need to listen, but I can also at the same time formulate a plan to fix the issue yeah. and store it away in the when filing it's a, cabinet. When it's appropriate. Right? Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. but but to say, hey, you know, if you need some help or if you need anything from me, let me know. Yeah. So it's like I'm still listening and or and also in in that we also need to make sure we we uh we reflect back what the person is saying so that it tells them that we're actually listening. Ah, especially good if, point. Especially if you have a history of not or being accused of not listening, right? Right. We got to re- we got to repeat back what we've heard. We got to reflect it back so that the person knows that yeah. you did hear them. Yeah. And because if that way it's, you're kind of off the hook because you say, well, for what I'm hearing you say is, and if you're wrong, the person's going to say, no, that's not what I was saying. I was saying this. Sure. Then you're, you go, oh, okay, now I get it, right? Yeah. So there's versus you make an assumption and then there's an argument and then there's back and forth. And how many times have we, you know, back in the day, you know, in the circular argument that never goes anywhere, gets solved, and everybody's just angry all the time because. Yeah, like, yeah. I've I've had I've had students in my office out at the Adult and Teen Challenge Center start to discuss an issue with me, and in the middle of them telling me, I'll start to give them the answer, and they've stopped me. Go, don't inter- please don't interrupt me. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I did interrupt you. Right. You know that's not active listening. That's that's fixing, man. And I don't even know the whole problem yet. Yeah. <laughs> but it's you know sometimes as professionals in that situ in those situations. You know, if we're not careful, we can easily uh, get irritated that sometimes it's the same thing over and over and over again. And you just want to say, you just want to tell somebody, hey, you know, this is how you fix it. Mm -hmm. You know, shut the hell up and go do it. (laughs) Right. And it's like that you can't you can't do that because no one's going to hear that because it didn't that didn't work with me. And I'm sure that didn't work with you. Right. Uh, We just have to change the way that we communicate and listen and and. Use proper verbiage when we're when we're helping somebody. Uh, here's number two, preparedness. So this would speak to a mentor that is actually working through a process with you. Uh, being a mentor means making an important, serious commitment to someone to give your mentee and the process the respect he or she deserves. Show your faith in your mentee's abilities and in the process by preparing for each mentoring session. So that'd be somebody that was more you're, you're sitting down with on a regular basis. You know, so you need to be prepared. You need to know your stuff, you know, especially if you're a sponsor. Uh, number three, and this is really, I think, vital, approachability, availability, and the ability to listen. We got to hit on that. Right. Uh, your, uh, your mentee must feel comfortable approaching you for advice or consultation. However, he or she must keep your availability and your schedule in mind. So it's good policy to establish a set day, a time, a regular session, or meetings, but always be prepared for the last minute phone call. That's where that, yeah, I got time. I can, you know what, Dave, I, I, I'll be real honest with you. No matter how busy I am, there is a, unless I'm rushing my wife to the hospital, right? I can't think of any time where I can't push the pause button and listen to you. There's nothing that important in my life. Maybe an open bleeding wound. Maybe an open bleeding wound, right? Right. Um, number four, honesty and diplomacy. Any que- questions that aren't addressed can lead to concerns and problems. So you owe it to your mentees to be candid and straightforward with him or her. Provide useful, honest guidance while ensuring that your mentee takes the reins and makes his or her own decisions as the next steps or best course of action. So if you're mentoring somebody, don't do it for them. Right. Right. You got to allow them to to do it and make mistakes themselves. Right, Dave? That's right, Monty. Thank you. Uh, the, yeah. the, the thing that popped in my mind as you were talking is that um, the other thing we got to also remember is like, Sometimes we just got to reach out to people um, just to reach out. Because mm-hmm. if we haven't heard from somebody for we a while. We just check in on them. We should say, hey, how long does it, how many seconds does it take to say, to shoot a text or, uh, you know, a, a message on Messenger? Yeah. How are you doing? Haven't haven't uh, checked in with you for a while? How are things going? Oh, boy. I'm feeling convicted. Hi, Marco. 
I haven't texted or called Marco in months. I need to do that. He's he's a buddy of mine. It's very supportive of our show, and I haven't done that. Okay, at the end of the show today, I'm going to call Marco. <laughs> okay, I'm going to hold you to okay, it. Okay, I'm going to do that. If he's listening, and he listens quite often, he's probably. But how, I mean, that's talk. those yeah. are the things you know, and you know, especially if they're you know, uh, <coughs> if you spend any time on social media, and you you know, you kind of. You know, keep an eye on, like you said, people, what people are posting. It's like, how long does it take to, or if someone isn't asking you for help, but post something yeah. that you know they're, they're struggling, how, you know, does it take much? word goes a long way. Yep. That's, I mean, cause I know when, I, when, you know, when I've gone through stuff and I, when you've gone through stuff, it's always good to know that, you know, there's someone willing to like reach out. And say, hey, you know, we're we're praying for you, or yeah. you know, we're here for you, or whatever. Because and it doesn't take it doesn't take a whole lot of effort. Uh, number five, uh, objectivity and fairness. Remember that a mentoring relationship uh, can be different than a friendship. Yes, you like your mentee, um, uh, your mentee, and care about seeing him or her succeed. That's what you want, but that doesn't mean you have to socialize with your mentee or follow or friend him on their social media site. So there's the other side of it. You, you don't have to be best buddies, right? You don't, you don't have to be going back and forth on social media. You, you could be a good man. I mean, Dr. Berger and I right. don't do that, you know, but when we, but we, here's the thing, we know we can, I know Tony Messbarger as of recently has clicked the like button on certain things or made a short comment. I haven't heard from him in a long time, but I know that he's there. I, I know that, again, I can pick up the phone. Right. I know I could do that. Uh, and the last one, your compassion and, and genuineness. Just because you must maintain your objectivity and fairness doesn't mean you can't show compassion. In fact, your mentoring relationship probably won't work if you don't show your interest and desire to provide one-on-one -on -one guidance and help. So I may not be able to fly out to Florida and be with you today, but I am telling you, I'm available for you anytime you pick up that phone. You know, right. um, and, and so we have to be compassionate. Uh, and I, I, I don't think, you know, some sponsors are those hard nose. You know, like I said, hey kid, you know, take the cotton out of yours. Thing, you know, that's not helpful to me. Yeah, you know, I need some compassion. I, I don't need harshness. Maybe I need some firmness sometimes, but I don't need somebody to be overly harsh with me it hasn't worked for me does that work for you dave no but i've i've been i've been called you know i've been called told, out told that i've been a little harsh sometimes because i i'm pretty direct with people i don't like to i don't like to sugarcoat things you know uh so that's fine but you don't have to you don't have to be destructive no i do it in a in a loving way and i right. try to you know make sure i let them know ahead of time if i'm gonna you know be a little firm yeah, uh, love you, but you need to stop doing this, right? Yeah, yeah. Or you need to start doing this or quit talking about it and go do it. Yeah, we need that. Yeah. We need that because we like to whine. We like to complain. That's why I got a weekly whine every week on the first two weeks of the month. But we can't stay in that. Right. In, in, you know, my sponsor used to say, you know, how long are you going to sit in that poopy diaper, dude? Right. Right? And people see that. And if you're a neg negative person and you're – you know, or you're posting negative things, like you said, on social media, people are watching that and nobody wants to associate with somebody that's negative all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So talk about, uh, as we get ready to close out here, talk about the guy and let's talk about sponsorship for a minute. All right. Particularly, or a mentorship where you are working closely with somebody directly on a regular basis. And that person passes away <clears throat> or that person, heaven forbid, fires you <laughs> as a sponsee or a sponsor, right? Uh, or for whatever reason, you outgrow them. Yeah. People outgrow their mentors all the time. Nothing wrong with that. That, right. that happened. Um, how long should you go without having that, that good accountability in your life? Uh, you know, is it okay to go a whole year without somebody like that in your life or not so much? What do you think? Wow. Well, I can only speak for myself. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I can give advice, but um, I have a lot of people in my life. Oh, there you go. 
So so one falls off, you still have a group of people. Yeah. Yeah. That's really, that's like the best I mean, answer I don't right know there. What I, how the how else to say it? I mean, if you only have one person in your life that you're talking with, yeah, it's something's probably got to change, you know, and there's different ways of, some people deal with social anxiety and so that becomes an issue, but there's, you know, there's online support groups. Um, there's ways you can, you can practice, uh, doing some, working through some of that social anxiety. I know when I first got into the rooms, I would go to meetings like right as they were starting or even like right after they started. Yeah. And I'd scoot in on, in the back row. And as soon as the meeting was over, I'm, you know, I'm speeding out of the parking lot. You know, I don't think I went out for coffee or fellowship after a meeting for probably a couple of years. Wow. You know, um, and same with church. I would come in and sit in the back row and, you know, get up and, and exit stage left. Before the crowd start to uh, gather. Right. Yeah. Um, and I slowly started, you know, getting more integrated into, and I would move, I would practice, I would go forward in church. Um, same with meetings. I'd go sit in the middle or I'd go sit in the front row uh, or, and then I started chairing meetings. So, um, there's, you know, I was, I was working through that because it was one of those things that was in my plan of the only thing you have to change is everything. Yeah. Is doing opposite of what you're doing before. Right. So I was isolating and doing things on my own. So I had to do the opposite of that. And, and, you know, pretty soon I'm, you know, um, I'm chairing all these meetings. I'm getting involved with, with, uh, my church, get on all these, you know, groups, being, being mm -hmm. a leader, um, speaking in front of, you know, telling my story at a meeting. Um, I went and spoke at Hazelden. Uh, you know, they have a, the, the night lecture where they bring people in to tell their story. Mm -hmm. I did that a couple of times and that was a little, that was a little scary. At, you know, you're going in, you're sitting in front of, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, maybe 200 yeah. other, you know, professional addicts. Right. <laughs> uh, They're certainly not lay people. That's right. right. You know, and then I did, a, I got a scholarship uh, at college and they asked me to come and speak in front of uh, the crowd. Yeah. Uh, so that was a little scary, but it was one of those things that, that I, I wanted to do. But it was it was a little scary at first, mm -hmm. and so working through that and actually pushing myself through that, and it became easier. Yeah. You know? So that's one of those things I, I recommend that you you try the best you can to work through any of those those struggles that you have, or find somebody else that you can come alongside with. Mm -hmm. You know, I uh, you know I offer my my uh, my assistance with people. You know, I say, hey, if you need somebody to you know go to a meeting with. You know, I'll, I'll right. give me a call. I'll meet you there. We'll go, we'll go together. So you don't, you're not by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So you get comfortable. Yeah. And I think that speaks, I mean, I've heard people say, well, you know, uh, I'm not picking you up for the meeting. You need to put your best foot forward and just make the effort and just show up. I'm not going to help you do that. You just need to do it. Cause I'm not always going to be here. And I'm like, are you serious? Come on. What if you can't get to the meeting? You know, I, I, you know, I mean, <laughs> I will all, other, other than members of the opposite sex, right? Right. I will give anybody a ride to the meeting, including a female, as long as there's somebody else with me, right? You know, but I've never turned somebody down for that. That's crazy stuff. So, so on another note, if if you're new in the rooms of recovery, or you're new at your church, or you're new at Rotary <laughs> Club, or you're new at the Boy Scout Leadership Convention or uh, uh, um, uh, meeting that you go, whatever it is you go to. Um, find somebody. We hear this all the time in the rooms. Find somebody. You, you're, you're listening to them. The, the, what they display seems to be mature. They seem to, to have some form of integrity. They walk the walk. They talk the talk. They do, you know, and you like what they do. Maybe sit next to them, rub up against them a little bit, you know, kind of get to know them a little bit. Right. right? And, and uh, they don't necessarily have to be your sponsor. They can turn into your sponsor. You know, but 
I think everybody needs to have mentor or mentors. I really and, do. And there's usually going to be somebody that's going to, you know, you walk into a, a, a support group or a meeting, there's usually going to be somebody that's going to come up to you and say hello. Right. Right? Yeah. So there's Very your seldom. first, there's your first connection. Ever. Yeah. There's your foot in the door, you know, and then you just, you know, obviously if you've had troubles in the past, you've been hurt in the past, you're going to be cautious, but you can't just shut yourself off for the rest of your life just because, you know, you had some bad experiences. Yeah. Very seldom have I gone someplace new where at least one person hasn't said something. Right. Yeah. That's, that's rare. Yeah. All right. All right. Closing thoughts, Mr. Vid. Keep up the good work. Don't forget to ask for help. Yeah. Amen. All right. Our closing song is, uh, it's a new song uh, by our friend Jeff Bates. And uh, listen to the end of the song. You can, uh, well, I'll tell you now and you can listen to the end too. If you go to jeffbates.com, just spell it just the way it sounds, Jeff Bates. Um, or I'm sorry, I take that back, jeffbates.net. Correction, jeffbates.net. Uh, he's got just a whole slew of recovery focused music. Um, he is very country in his sound. Uh, this song is a brand new one. It's entitled, If I Get Drunk Tonight. Check it out. And everybody, well, keep putting one foot in front of the other. Right, Dave? That's right. And happy President's it. Day. Yeah, it is happy President. It is a President's Day. Little bell there. <laughs> little one of those two. See, that's both sides of the fence. Got, right? Working together. Chiming together. Harmonizing. All right. Here's Jeff Bates. Right here. If I get drunk tonight Will your memory leave And never come back Like you left me Will I stop hurting Or does the whiskey just lie I'll know tomorrow If I get drunk tonight I threw away My wedding band Hunted it down And put it back on my hand I burned your pictures Everyone I could find Wish I could build a fire And let it burn in my mind So if I get drunk tonight Will I find relief well, I close my eyes And finally get sleep Will I stop hurting? Or does the whiskey just lie? I'll know tomorrow If I get drunk tonight I climbed these floors And I've walked these walls Slammed down the phone Every time you ain't called Finally gave up On hearing from you it to God Thank He gave up to So if I get drunk tonight I find some peace I close my eyes And finally 
Get drunk tonight And that is the music of our friend Mr. Jeff Bates For more of his great country sound and his recovery-focused music, visit his website at jeffbates.net. All right, my friends, until our next broadcast, this is the Monty Man, along with Dave Fleming and the Take 12 Recovery Radio family, reminding you that because of God's great love for you, you are entitled to overcome. This has been a broadcast of KHLT Recovery Broadcasting.